Good morning. Happy Christmas to you. This is another great occasion to gather in the presence of the Lord and rejoice in the birth of our Savior. We give thanks to God for his great gift to us, the gift of salvation and eternal life. Today, along with that, a life-giving gifts, Holy Communion, we are again going to offer the common cup, the chalice, as part of the communion sacrament, and uh, that's at your option, so, so don't feel compelled or pressured to partake of that. Even if you did in the past, if that was your custom, you don't have to return to it if you don't want to, but we will offer it in our regular rotation, and you're invited to partake of the Lord's Supper in that way. Also, that you see all of these wonderful flowers, poinsettias, and white roses. If you uh, provided those for the beauty of our worship after the service, you're invited to take yours home. That would be, be the best use of it, otherwise they'll just sit here all week so uh, yeah you're invited to do that at the conclusion of the service and also on your way out today deaconess sharon has a special gift for you so don't rush off before you get that anything else we need to make note of well great we'll just do a general sharing of the peace the peace of the lord be with you good thank you and uh, praise and petitions. Are there things we can lift up today in prayer? Dawn. Asking God to be with Rocky for uh, health treatment and make it a blessing for him and renewal and good physical strength and also giving thanks for reunion with Dawn's daughters and praying for that to continue. Joellen. This Friday our son, son Joel and their daughter Cynthia and the boys are grandson. They're going towards um, Dallas for um, New Year's so I wish them a safe trip. Asking God to give safe travel to family and Watch over them, keep them in his good care. Betsy? So people in my family with COVID are recovering. Thank you for that. Thank the Lord for recovery from COVID. Pam? Uh, for my cousin Audrey, she is fighting breast cancer. Oh, cousin Audrey with breast cancer and ask brain cancer and praying God to be at work her life and body and make his will be done for her. Alice. And the Lord will continue to be with Ed. They have to start back tomorrow. And we thank Key Point for helping getting there for him. Thankful for the help and care of family members. And Ed, I don't know, maybe you had forgotten, but Alice is reminding you, you have to go back to treatment tomorrow. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> So we ask the Lord to continue to go with you for perseverance and a healing. Joe. Well, I'm thankful that our family members are all recovering from surgeries and COVID. Thankful again to the Lord for recovery, family members from surgery and COVID. Praying for that to continue. All this goes up to our gracious and loving Heavenly Father. With that, we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing, Lo, how a rose air blooming. <laughs>
stand. Knowing that Jesus has come to reconcile us with God, let us give voice to our brokenness and find healing in Christ. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We stand. <coughs> child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy, rejoice out loud, sing your praises. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
birth to birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh, may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Wasn't part of the reading. Today's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 52, 7 to 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. <coughs> Listen, your look up, lift their voice, we sing out together. Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has dared his holy arm in view of all the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen our God. <coughs> Victory. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Word of the Lord. Today's epistle reading is from Titus 3, 4 through 7. But when God, our Savior's kindness and love appeared, he saved us because of his mercy, not because of righteous things we had done. He did it through the washing of new birth and the re renewing of the Holy Spirit, which set us upon us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So since we've been made rich by his grace, we can inherit the hope for eternal life. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord.
stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself was not the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world did not recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people did not welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, Full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and sing the hymn.
peace be yours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I came across this last week from author and poet Kathleen Norris in her devotion Christmas Eve Vigil. First, she acknowledges the exhaustion many of us feel after all the holiday activities from Thanksgiving onward. But Kathleen Norris says she believes that in admitting our weariness, we can find hope. She writes, it is not merely the birth of Jesus we celebrate now, although we recall it joyfully in song and story. The Feast of the Incarnation invites us to celebrate also Jesus' death, resurrection, and coming again in glory. It is our salvation story, and all of creation is invited to dance, sing, and feast. But we are so exhausted. How is it possible to bridge the gap between our sorry reality and the glad, grateful recognition of the incarnation as the mainstay of our faith? We might begin by acknowledging that if we have neglected the spiritual call of Advent for yet another year and have allowed ourselves to become thoroughly frazzled by December 25th, all is not lost. We are, in fact, in very good shape for Christmas. It is precisely because we are poor in spirit, because we are weary, that God can touch us with hope. This is not an easy truth. It means that we do accept our common lot and take up our share of the cross. It means that we do not gloss over the evils we confront every day, both within ourselves and without. Our sacrifices may be great, But as the martyred Archbishop of El Salvador, Oscar Romero, once said, it is only the poor and hungry, those who know they need someone to come on their behalf, who can celebrate Christmas. At Christmas, we are asked to acknowledge that the world we have made is in darkness. We are asked to be attentive and keep vigil for the light of Christ. We and our world are broken. It is only God, through Jesus Christ, who can make us whole again. The prophecy of Isaiah moves us to imagine a time when God's promise will be fulfilled and we will no longer be desolate or forsaken, but found and beloved of God. We find a note of hope also at the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. In the long list of Jesus' forebears, we find the whole range of humanity. Not only God's faithful, but adulterers, murderers, rebels, conspirators, transgressors of all sorts, both the fearful and the bold. And yet God's purpose is not thwarted. In Jesus Christ, God turns even human dysfunction to the good. Jesus reveals that God chooses to work with us as we are, using our weaknesses even more than our strengths to fulfill the divine purpose. In a world as cold and cruel and unjust Now, as it was at the time of Jesus' birth in a stable, we desire something better. And in desiring it, we come to believe that it is possible. We await its coming in hope. And from there we go to Titus chapter 3, where our hope is confirmed. As the whole way of God's plan of redemption is summarized in one paragraph, the kindness and love of God appeared in a stable 
outside of Bethlehem. This is not an abstract concept, an untested theory. It's not merely a good idea or a holiday wish. The conception and birth of Jesus revealed a person who is kindness and love in the flesh. God didn't just talk about his desire or issue a decree or keep the whole messy business at arm's length. He stepped into humanity to save us. He got up close and personal with our existence and our predicament. He was willing to walk in our shoes, willing to experience our plight. As the apostle makes clear, we didn't deserve this. We didn't earn it. We didn't have a right to it. We didn't obligate God to it by our good behavior. It came about entirely because of God's mercy. The desire not to condemn, but to save. To help people who could not help themselves. To rescue those who were lost and stranded. Here is the picture to hold of Jesus. The clear association to make with the baby, the adult, the crucified and risen one. He is kindness and love incarnate. How do we get in on this? How is hope made real to us? It says right there, through the washing by the Holy Spirit. Baptism that brings us to share in Jesus' death and resurrection. Here you are cleansed. Here you are redeemed. Here you are made alive by God's power. This is not a static event, a one-time deal over and done with. This is rebirth and renewal. Those who were once dead now live. We are constantly remade by the refreshing love and kindness of Christ. This is the bubbling fountain that recharges our faith. Even as this body decays, our inner spirit, now alive, takes hold of an ever-increasing portion of God's generosity. Life is transformed. Although still plagued by sin, we are able to aim higher and put God's redemption into practice. This is sanctification, the work of the Holy Spirit to make us holy with Jesus so that God's declaration of forgiveness and acceptance defines who we are and how we live. And then comes the blessed result. This washing of new birth means we are justified by the grace of God, our Savior. That's a good summary of Jesus' nature and character. Grace-filled. Always reaching out. Always bending down, always lifting up, always gathering in. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Instead, he gives us his righteousness. He bestows on us his status with our Heavenly Father. He opens the way for us to be at rest and without fear in the presence of God. With this established and guaranteed, we have the hope of eternal life. Now to be clear, hope does not mean that it's in doubt. Instead, it is something certain that has not yet been fully delivered. 
It is the inheritance we are waiting for. It is eternal life in the presence of God that far surpasses anything we can imagine. It is rapturous, fulfilled joy that is never interrupted. Hope takes us into the full goodness of Christ with nothing interfering. And all of this ours because love came down from heaven. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses human understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We stand and confess the saving faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all. let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who celebrate the incarnation, that the knowledge that their God reigns would cause them to lift up their voices and sing for joy now and always, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who proclaim peace and bring good news of happiness in Christ, that they would be kept faithful to declare his reign. And for all missionaries at home and abroad, that all the ends of the earth may see his salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior, just as Mary, Joseph, and common shepherds first believed and proclaimed his incarnation, that the Holy Spirit may work the miracle of faith as he wills. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who administer and judge our laws in this land and for its citizens, that authority would be rightly honored and that we would be preserved from evil rulers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer sickness in mind or body, for the homebound, for all who ask our prayers, that God would grant them healing, peace, patience, and faith that endures, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all communicants, that we may receive the great love of God that laid his son in a manger and now lays his flesh and blood before us in bread and wine, and that we may bow our hearts before him with all those in heaven and on earth who adore him, receiving his forgiveness and life with repentance and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the believers who have gone before us, especially those who have been with us during Christmas's past and now live with Christ, that we may be confident in his promise of resurrection and eternal life and at last join them in his presence when his kingdom comes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, the Word become flesh, the Savior of the nations, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God. 
Amen. You may be seated. We take time now to reflect on the good and abundant gifts of God to us and have this opportunity to present our offerings to him as we hear the piano offertory. To you, O Lord, we offer our praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and prepare for the sacrament with the prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. 
graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the New Testament shed for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.